Yo, what's going on everybody? So in today's video, I'm going to show you a few ways in which we can style React components with CSS. This topic doesn't include external frameworks such as Tailwind or preprocessors such as SAS. I'm going to cover a few of the more basic techniques, including external, modules, and inline CSS styling. We will need a component to work with. Let's begin with the button component. Let's go to our source folder, new file, button.jsx. We'll create a function-based component because we like function-based components. Be sure to export it because I sometimes forget to do that. So let's do it now. Export default, the name of the component. Then we will return a single button element with text that says, click me. Normally when setting a CSS class, you use the keyword class. However, in JSX, that's a reserved keyword. We'll instead use class name with a capital N. I'll set my class name to be button. All right, then we just need to import this button component. Going back to our app component, that's the parent. We will import button from its location. Dot forward slash button dot JSX. And now we have a button component to work with. There's my button. Let's begin with external CSS styling. We should already be a little familiar with it already. Heading to our index CSS style sheet, we can apply some global styles. We will select the class name of button dot to select a class button. Let's apply the following CSS properties, but feel free to make any changes or alterations. I will begin with a background color. I've already pre-picked a color. Personally, I like using HSL values, 200 for the hue, 100% for the saturation, 50% for the lightness. That will give you a light blue color. For the font color, that would be the color property. I will set that to be white. For padding, let's say 10 pixels by 20 pixels. Border radius to round the corners. I will set that to be five pixels. Border none to remove the border. Then let's change our cursor to be a pointer when we hover over the button. That's not a bad looking button. I am zoomed in to like 300% just for this demonstration. All right, we have utilized an external CSS style sheet. They're easy to use for simple projects such as making a YouTube video tutorial. It gives you flexibility with media queries and pseudo selectors. You can use external style sheets to apply global styles throughout your web application. However, using external style sheets can lead to naming conflicts, especially when you have more components and classes to work with. If you have a large web application, you'll likely have all sorts of different buttons. You would need a strong naming convention and good organization. Two buttons you may create might have the same class name by mistake. And with large applications, it might be difficult to keep track of all the different class names. Moving on to method two, let's cut all of these properties, save. We're going to create a module now. That's the second method. We'll create a dedicated CSS style sheet specifically for each component. What you may see some developers do is they'll create a new folder specifically for their component. Let's create a new folder, which we will name button, the name of our component. Let's move our button component to the button folder. Let's move it. Be sure to update any imports as well. My app component is now importing the button component from the button directory. Within our button folder, we'll create a new file. This will be a CSS style sheet, which we will name the name of the component, in this case button, dot module dot CSS. Let's paste all of those properties that we cut before. Now from our button component, we will need to import this module. At the top, we will import styles from the location of that module, dot forward slash button dot module dot CSS. For our class name, we will use a set of curly braces to use a dynamic value. Our class name will equal our import of styles dot the name of the class button. 
And there's our button again. The nice thing about modules is that it avoids naming conflicts because a unique class is going to be generated for you via a hashing algorithm. If I were to right click on this button and go to inspect, this class name is unique. It's generated via a hash. So with modules, we don't have to worry about naming conflicts. Modules are also convenient if each component has its own unique style. However, a few of the downsides though with using modules is that it does require additional setup and global styles aren't applied easily. You would have to import them from elsewhere and that's a whole thing. Let's remove our button component from the button directory. Let's put it back in source and delete our button directory. Going to our button component, then remove the import as well. We don't need that anymore. Now we're going to use inline styles. What you see some people do is they'll create a JavaScript object named styles. Styles equals a set of curly braces for an object. Let's paste all of those CSS properties. We're within JSX code right now. We can't use any dashes. We'll switch to a camel case naming convention. All values should be strings. Each property should be comma separated. Let's remove our class name. We will set the style attribute to equal use a set of curly braces to insert a dynamic value. We will insert our styles object that contains all of these CSS properties. And now we have done inline CSS styling. Inline CSS styling is convenient and easy to understand. It prevents global style conflicts because we're not working with class names. It's great for isolated components with minimal styling, such as a like button or a subscribe button. However, inline styling can be increasingly less maintainable in large applications. It reduces the readability of your components, especially if you have a lot of CSS properties. It's not great for any complex styling, such as responsive CSS. It tends to be better for components with minimal styling. All right, everybody. So those are three different ways in which we can style React components with CSS. External, which is great for global styles or small projects. Modules, which is preferred for individual components that have their own unique styles. And inline, which tends to be good for any small components with minimal styling. Use what's best for your project or your own personal preference or whatever your team prefers if you're working on a project together. There's no one size fits all approach, unfortunately. Myself, I prefer to use modules, but throughout this series, I'm going to be using a lot of external CSS just because our projects are really small. And well, everybody, those are a few ways in which you can style React components with CSS.